Good morning and welcome. My name is Amanda Favaverdi and I'm the director of the IFP or the International Foundation Programme. Um, this is a course for students um, who don't have the necessarily qualifi necessary qualifications to apply for direct entry to the University of Reading. Um, it's a one year access course and we're very pleased to announce this year that students can start their studies on campus in September or they have the option to begin their studies online. So there's a flexible option to either study remotely on the IFP from September as well as the option to start the, on campus. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Mark Peace. I'm a senior academic tutor on the International Foundation Programme and you've got my email address here if you'd like to contact me. I'm going to start by telling you a bit about the University of Reading. We're a large university with around 19,000 students from about 150 countries. We're highly ranked in uh, the top 30 universities in the UK. We have this lovely award-winning campus and a great location close to London. We also have modern accommodation and we're research intensive with around 98% of our research internationally recognised. In case you don't know where we are, Reading is here to the west of London. It takes about 30 minutes to get to London from Reading and we're close to the large London Heathrow Airport uh, taking about 40 minutes and we're the largest town in the UK. You see here an aerial photograph of the main campus of the University of Reading, which is White Knights campus. And this is where the International Foundation Programme is based. Here you have the schools and departments and also this lovely parkland uh, with its lakes, uh, woodland and open grass areas. From ground level here you have some more photographs showing the lake, uh, the campus environment and some of the older more traditional buildings on campus. We also have new facilities and on the left you can see the newly refurbished main uh, library which holds the book collections, the journal collections and also a lot of study spaces for students as well as computer facilities. On the right is a brand new building for life sciences with state-of-the-art kitted out uh, teaching laboratories so that students can do practicals and experiments. Now I want to move on to talk about the International Foundation Program. We're a high quality, high progression program. And here you can see another aerial photograph showing the Edith Morley building, which is where the International Foundation Program is based. So it's good to understand that we're a university owned program and we're located in the heart of the main White Knights campus. Here are some more photos of the Edith Morley building and the surrounding space and you can see and get a sense of the vibrancy and the environment of studying at the University of Reading. Of course, the main activity that takes place on the IFP is the teaching and learning, and you'll be taught by experts in their field from university academics that are within the University of Reading. And here you've got some pictures of the activities. So there's tutorials, seminars and lectures which take place on the main White Knights campus. Here I'm showing you some of the staff, the dedicated team, which will be teaching you on the programme when you arrive. The Reading IFP has been around for a very long time, 35 years in fact. It was established in 1985 and at that time uh, we only had 27 students and uh, they came from eight different countries. They were all studying science subjects. So why was it set up? Well, because in those days, um, some countries had 12 as opposed to the UK's 13 years of compulsory education. So um, 
they didn't have access to A-level or IB courses. So our preparatory course offered these students, uh, these international students, the chance to participate in undergraduate studies in the UK. And here you can see our students from this past academic year, 2019 to 20. Um, and this year we had 127 students on the programme from a wide variety of nationalities. Um, we now offer two entry points, which I'll talk about a little later. And at this point, students don't just have to do science programmes, they can progress onto most degrees at the University of Reading. Here you can see all the different nationalities of the students on this year's IFP, 43 different nationalities. Um, our, our greatest numbers come this year from um, Oman and also quite a few from China as well. But you can see there's a very wide spread of nationalities and of countries of origin, which means that if you were to come onto the, UA, onto the IFP, you would definitely meet a lot of students from a lot of different countries. IFP students have a very wide choice of degrees to progress on to after they finish the IFP. As you can see here, uh, there are these are some of our most popular degrees, um, and the most popular being business and management. And also law is very popular as well among our students. But students have a choice to progress on to nearly all degrees at the University of Reading. So this slide shows some of our most popular progression degrees. Uh, you would have access to most of the University of Reading degrees, um, including Henley Business School degrees, such as accounting and finance or business and management. Uh, degrees in the School of Law, like the LLB Law, uh, Architecture, Biomedical Sciences, uh, Computer Science, Chemistry, and our very well reputed Meteorology and Climate degree as well. So what do we teach? Let's have a look at the modules that we can teach you um, on the September entry IFP. So when we welcome you on the program in September, what modules can you take? Well, first of all, there is one compulsory module for all students, and that's the Academic Skills 20 credit module. I'll talk more about that later. And then if your English isn't quite up to the required level for undergraduate study, you would have to take the International English module, which is 40 credits. And then you can see on this slide here, there is a, a list of optional modules, some of which may be compulsory for specific for progression to specific degrees. So, for instance, obviously, if you were going on to a degree in chemistry, you'd be required to study the chemistry module. So here's an example for students going on to the BA in Business and Management. Their compulsory modules would be one mathematical module for 40 credits. This could be um, the Maths for Economics and Business module or the Information Systems and Statistics module. There's a choice there. And then the second module would be the Introduction to Business and Management. They would also have to take Academic Skills. And then they can choose one recommended module out of the following. And we've got quite a wide choice here. You could take economics, you can take a second maths module, you could do politics, sociology, law, psychology, all are available to you. So the academic skills module is the 20 credit module that's compulsory for everybody. And it's a very useful module which helps you to adjust to the UK academic culture. Um, you'll be studying subjects like critical thinking and how to research and reference your work, um, how to write essays correctly and how to give presentations. All very useful transferable skills for your future career as well. So to summarise, you would be required to take three 40 credit modules, one of which might be International English, 
and then a 20 credit module in academic skills. And then your other modules would be dependent on your progression degree and relevant to your progression degree. So as you can see of the photo from the photos here, our students are taught on the IFP in a variety of different ways. And usually it's quite small classes. Uh, our biggest classes would be lectures. Um, and you can see in the photo in the top left hand corner, um, this is an IFP lecture. Um, it's probably the about 50 to 55 students maximum. So never huge, huge classes. There's a lot of interaction in our teaching. As you can see, there's labs and computer labs that go on all the time on campus. So let's have a look and see how our students are taught. So you will be taught by a variety of different means, uh, lectures, seminars, tutorials and workshops. The seminars and the tutorials and the workshops might be more interactive, whereas the lectures are more like bigger, bigger classes where you would be sitting, listening and taking notes. Um, if you are studying remotely, then you would have the same quality of teaching in a variety of formats, some of which, like tutorials or seminars, might be taught in live sessions each week. Importantly, I'd just like to say that teaching across the IFP is by the academics from within the relevant schools. So, for example, if you're studying on the law module, your law teacher, although affiliated to the IFP, will be actually part of the law school. And therefore, they will know exactly what you require for the next year when you're doing undergraduate studies. So here's an example of a student's timetable, this student studying business subjects and English. And you can see that this is a Monday to Friday timetable with lessons from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. But there are quite a few breaks in the week. There are about uh, 19 hours of contact hours with uh, lectures and seminars and tutorials. But in the rest of the time, you are expected to work independently in the library to work on your coursework and your assignments, etc. So it is actually a full time course. So what happens when you finish your IFP year? Well, you progress to an undergraduate degree, your intended degree that you've chosen. And we're very happy to say that um, about 97% of our students pass the program and around 80%, sometimes higher each year, actually qualify for their University of Reading degrees. And those students, the, by far the majority, do prefer to stay at the University of Reading probably because they make friends here uh, and they enjoy the teaching here as well. So um, the, most students do stay in Reading, but some students may choose to go elsewhere because perhaps their, their degree isn't, isn't available here. Um, and we've placed students in a number of other universities, including, as you can see here, the London School of Economics or Warwick or Imperial College London in the past. And we will also help any students who haven't actually progressed to the degree of their choice to find a place in another university in the UK. Thank you, Amanda. I'm now going to tell you about the scholarships that are available for you to help with your finance on the International Foundation Programme. So first of all is the IFP Ambassador Scholarship, which any non-sponsored student can apply for. It's competitive so you will need to write an application to be considered for it and you can get £2,500 discount on your tuition fees. The application deadline is the 2nd of August and you apply through the applicant portal. Here's a photo of some of this year's uh, scholarship winners um, who were ambassadors for the International Foundation Programme. Another scholarship that you can get is the Country Discount Scholarship. And for this, 
if you are from a country that receives the scholarship, the discount is automatically applied to your tuition fees. And this covers a broad range of countries across the Middle East, North Africa, countries, some countries in Asia, uh, Nigeria, the USA, Brazil, and more. You can find out about these discounts um, by looking on our website, uh, reading.ac.uk IFP. I just want to mention about support on the IFP. Now, you will get an academic tutor who will be there for you throughout the year, monitoring your progress and checking that you're on course for being successful on the program. You'll have two meetings with them a term and they're also available at other times. And these will be university staff like myself uh, and you can uh, email them or turn up to their office and uh, with an appointment get to see them. There's also the university services on campus because you are a full member of the university when you're on the IFP. That means you have access to the international student advisory team, student welfare, study advice, counseling and wellbeing, uh, the disability office, career services and chaplaincy services. Life on the IFP isn't just about studying, and we feel it's really important that you socialise and get to know the other students on the programme. To help with this, we have a number of social events throughout the year, and a main one at the beginning is our IFP Away Day, where students, the whole cohort, come together and take part in activities which improves team building skills, self-confidence, and just meeting the other students on the programme. We also organise social events throughout the year, such as meals out, trips doing activities like ice skating, bowling or go-karting, and then visits to places of interest like historic towns such as Bath or Brighton here, and to places like Stonehenge or to Warwick Castle. Now, if you're unable to come uh, to the UK in September and join the programme on campus, we will still be organising online social events so you can get to meet the other students studying on the programme. And hopefully then when you come to the UK, you'll get to meet these students that you've already made friends with through the online events. Because on the IFP, you are a full member of the University of Reading, you are also a member of the Students' Union. And so that means you have access to the union building, which has the bars, restaurants and the nightclub. And you also can join any of the hundreds of clubs and societies, which includes those for students with interests the same as you, and also the sports clubs. So you can take part in sports and join teams from across the university. On the IFP, you'll be offered university halls accommodation. So you have the option of staying on campus, which has the benefits of 24 hour security and also being close to the schools and departments for your seminars and tutorials. There are catered options where the food is provided or self catered where you're cooking your own food and you can have the option of ensuite facilities. If you study hard and perform particularly well on the IFP, then there is the possibility of winning one of our merit awards. This student has won a £2,000 merit award, which helps towards his undergraduate fees for the first year. So let's have a look now at uh, the entry requirements for the International Foundation Programme and what qualifications you need to have. Well, first of all, you would need to have your secondary school completion certificate. I've given as an example here China and you're looking here at the senior high school graduation examination. So if you've done uh, up to year 12, so you've, you've done three years of high school in China, we'd expect you to have an overall average of 75%. But we do take students who have completed only to year 11 um, and therefore two years of high school. But then you have to have a slightly higher average overall of 80%. We accept the International Baccalaureate Diploma at 24 points. We do accept AS levels as well. And the minimum entry requirement for those with 
GCSEs or IGCSEs is five at grade C and above. Now, in terms of English, to access the IFP, you will need to have, for the most part, you will need to have a 5.5 in IELTS overall uh, with no skill below 4.5. Um, and that will allow you to get two degrees in the Henley Business School and law, etc. For some, for some progression degrees, we will allow you to enter the program with an IELTS 5. So how do you find out what are the entry requirements for your particular uh, case, your country and for your degree? You need to go on our website, first of all, and look in the uh, courses. So you see this one is the BA Business and Management course for three year course. Um, and if you scroll down from here, you'll see that you can find the entry requirements for your particular country. So you see, having scrolled down on this uh, page, web page here, you can see there's a link to um, qualifications required for your particular country. So this will bring you to country specific information here. You just have to search here for your flag and your country. Although there are other countries, these are not the only countries we would accept students from. Um, but most of the countries are listed here. So you just click on your country to find out the specific information for yours. I've got an example here for you from Saudi Arabia in the next slide. So you can see here with Saudi Arabia for the International Foundation Programme at the top here, you need to have either the Thanawiya with an overall score of 78% or a GPA of three if you're following the American system over there. So it's very easy for you to apply and register for the IFP. You can do so directly from our website using our online application service. And if you look at the link, the link on there, um, it explains to you how to apply via our online service, which on which you can complete your application form and attach electronic copies of or scans of your qualifications and certificates, etc. Any other supporting documentation you may need. So when you find yourself on this site, you can see on the left hand side here as a new applicant, you would need to to create an account and click on this button in the left hand column. But it's fine if you would like to just register using a paper application form by post. Uh, you just need to request one of these from the IFP admissions department. You can see their email is here and their phone number if it's easier to call. Now I'm going to pass you back to Mark, who's going to summarize some of the key benefits that we've looked at uh, today of the International Foundation Programme. Thank you for your attention and watching this presentation. We're now coming to the end and I just want to summarize some of the main reasons why you should choose the IFP at the University of Reading. So we have small classes. If you're successful on the IFP, you get a guaranteed place onto your undergraduate degree. And we have a high success rate. So about 79% of our students progress onto the undergraduate program, which they wish to go on to. And also students are taught by faculty academics. So they're taught from university academics within the subject areas that they're interested in. So it's really great preparation for then progressing on to the undergraduate. You get guaranteed university accommodation. And at the end, there's no need to take another IELTS uh, to progress on to the undergraduate. There's also a flexible choice of subject modules. We have a large number of subject modules, so you can study the areas that are really of interest to your undergraduate study. We also have a diverse range of nationalities on the IFP at Reading. It means you get to meet students from all over the world. It's a really rewarding uh, learning experience and a social experience on the programme. 
we are recognised by a number of other UK universities because we're one of the oldest and most established and well respected foundation programmes in the UK. And there's comprehensive support on the International Foundation programme. So you'll have your academic tutor and access to all the university facilities to support your study and life here on the IFP at the University of Reading. We're now at the end of the presentation and from Amanda and myself, I want to say again, thanks for listening. Um, here you have our contact details. Here's my email address and Amanda's email address. You can stay in touch with the International Foundation Programme by following us on Instagram, also Facebook, and you can find out a lot of information from YouTube uh, where there are student videos so you can hear what the students think about studying on the programme. Also, we've got our uh, website here where you have lots of extra information so you can find out again about the scholarships, about the modules, the programme degrees and how to apply. So importantly, how to apply for the IFP, you can find this on the uh, IFP website. Please also look at the other information on our microsite, so the other resources that are available like there's the student video link and also our brochure and student testimonials. You'll also find an active link on the microsite so please take a look at our website. Otherwise enjoy the day. I hope you get to see presentations from the schools and departments that you're interested in and if you have any queries or questions please come and find myself or Amanda in the UniBuddy um, site where we'll be there available to answer your questions directly live. So have a great day, thanks for listening and goodbye for now.